Now to the big race in Maryland. The Associated Press reporting Democrat Wes Moore has defeated his Republican challenger Dan Cox in the race for governor. Although Cox has yet to concede, Moore will become the state's first black governor. Joining us right now to talk with us about that is the governor-elect, Wes Moore. Sir, good to see you this afternoon. It's great to see you too, thank you. Uh, first, let's start now with um, what, what was a big night for you last night. You know, as you get ready for this transition, what do you anticipate the first 100 days looking like for your administration? Well, I, we're, we're excited about the fact that the people of Maryland, uh, you know, really gave us a, a pretty clear mandate that they want us to go fast and they want the state to be bold and they want the state to compete. Uh, and so you'll see with this transition period that we are gonna have, it is gonna be historically inclusive, but we're gonna be hard charging very much the way that we campaign, that we wanna make sure that all voices are being heard. Uh, we want to, are gonna make sure that we are gonna build a cabinet and build an administration that is not just reflective of the state of Maryland, but is going to be, uh, uh, going to be incredibly, not just qualified, but, uh, but also uh, you know, eager and aggressive in terms of making sure that we are doing the people's business. And I think you're gonna see a new level of partnership that we're gonna have between the legislature, between our local electeds, our county executives, our mayors, our, our city council people, because we are gonna make sure that people understand that in the governor's office, you're gonna have a partner in the work and a partner to make sure that we are moving fast and being bold as a state. Last night, you talked about your conversation with now outgoing Governor Larry Hogan, and I want to know what that transition looks like from one administration to the next. Have you assembled your transition team? Have they started to engage each other? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the governor was incredibly kind uh, last night, kind and gracious, uh, and called and congratulated me on uh, on the win and our teams are already now in touch where he's already assigned his lieutenant governor is going to be assisting with the transition uh and in in in, in very short order you are going to hear announcements from us about what our transition and transformation team is going to look like and i think people are going to see not only not only are they really going to be proud of the team that we are assembling but but people will have an opportunity to be able to participate because we're not just going to be historically transparent but we're going to be historically inclusive in the way we're talking about building a government that is going to be truly working not just uh, for the people but in partnership with the people uh, any concerns about what the economy could look like once you're installed in office there is growing fears that we could be uh, potentially dipping into a recession which would mean that by the time you're installed we could be in the middle of one at that point what sort of action are you prepared to take to help marylanders weather uh, those sort of economic conditions no, you're, you're, you're right, Larry. I mean, the, the, uh, the headwinds that we could be potentially seeing, uh, not just uh, as a state, but in the country and the globe, uh, they are real. And it is something that we are taking very seriously. Uh, I know that when we launched this campaign, this campaign was based on economics, right? How do you create pathways for work, wages, and wealth? for all Maryland families and not just some. And so we're gonna focus on the basics about the ways we know that we have to prepare for that type of, uh, you know, for that type of potential headwind, but know that our focus on economic growth has gotta be real. It means we've gotta get people back to work. It means we have to focus on things like job retraining and job reskilling, and also having an education system that's preparing people for the jobs of now and for the jobs of the future. It means we have to ensure that we're actually giving people good and fair wages for the work that they are doing and eliminating the days where we have people who are working jobs and in some cases multiple jobs and still living below or at a poverty line. And we also need to make sure we're focusing on wealth creation, creating an ownership society within the state of Maryland. If we can do those things and actually increase participation in Maryland's economy, Maryland will be very well positioned to be able to endure any type of economic headwinds that might be coming our way and making sure that we are thriving regardless. All right, we have 10 seconds left. I want to address something we saw on stage last night. When you and your family came out, we got to see your children. Your children seemed really excited uh, about your win, um, and they were certainly happy. They were waving to the crowd. I wonder, has it set in on the whole family yet about what has just happened? I, I think uh, the, the whole family is excited, and, and we promised the kids that no matter what, uh, win, lose, or draw in November, that they were going to get a puppy. So they are very excited. The excitement <laughs> that you saw, I think, was as much about the puppy as it was about anything else, but, uh, but we're excited and we're ready and we're really grateful that the people of Maryland have, uh, have given us the honor uh, of being their next chief executive. All right, well, we look forward to seeing that new puppy as well soon. Thank you, sir. Congratulations on your win. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. All right, take care. Well, there are a number of ways that you can find the latest election results today. One way is to scan the QR code on your screen. You can visit WUSA9.com elections or download our free WUSA9 mobile app.